In the first video, we found all the null clines of the equilibrium solutions and all the directions of our vectors on the null clines. And now we're going to classify each of the equilibrium points to see if it matches what my guess was in the previous uh, video. So the Jacobian matrix is the matrix that allows us to zoom in at equilibrium points in a linear in a nonlinear system and look at them in a linear way. It's kind of like um, oh, what's that called? Linear approximation using the tangent line in calculus one and or a tangent plane in calculus three, depending on which classes you take. Now, according to mathematics, the Jacobian matrix that we're going to use here to linearize looks like this. So I'm going to take the partial of F with respect to X for that first part, part and then a partial of F with respect to Y, and the partial of G with respect to X, and then the partial of G with respect to Y. G's and Y's tend to look the same. So what is F and what is G? So according to this, this is F of X, Y, and this is G of X, Y. So I'm just going to write them out. It's easier for me to find partial derivatives if I multiply everything out, especially since these are polynomial. So F of X, Y is minus X squared minus X, Y plus 100 X. And then g of x, y, give myself some space here, is equal to minus x squared y minus y cubed plus 2500 y. Now, to do this right, you just got to be really particular when you do your derivatives. So the partial of f with respect to x turns out to be minus 2x minus y plus 100. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to minus x. That's it. Now for g of x, y, my partial of g with respect to x is going to be, let's see, minus 2xy. And then my partial of g with respect to y is going to be turning out to be minus x squared minus 3y squared plus 2,500. So my Jacobian then turns out to be, if I put all of these functions into the right space, I get minus 2x minus y plus 100 minus x, minus x squared plus 3y squared plus 25, whoops. No, that's not the right order, sorry. Get rid of that. Luckily, we have plenty of space on this one. <laughs> so let's see, this is a partial with respect to, okay, so minus 2x minus y plus 100. And then the partial of f with respect to y, that one's there. I was looking at the wrong one here. So this is minus 2xy. And this is minus x squared minus 3y squared plus 2500. There we go. Now that's our Jacobian. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our three equilibrium points, plug it into our Jacobian, look at the characteristic polynomial, and determine uh, its classification. So the three ordered pairs I got in the previous video were 0, 0, 0, 50, and 100, 0. Now this is a plug and chug game. I'm just going to plug these numbers in here and uh, see what I get out, and then go ahead and do my a minus lambda i. For 0, 0, I plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. I get 100. I get 0. I get 0. And here I get 2,500. For this guy here, I plug in 0 for x and 54 y. So here I get, uh, let's see, I get 50. I get 0. I get zero, and here it looks like if I plug in zero for x and 50 for y. Let me get my calculator out. So that's going to be minus three times 50 squared plus 2,500. 
and that's minus 5,000. And then for 100, 0, I'm going to plug in 100 for y, or I'm sorry, 100 for x and 0 for y. So I plug in 100 here and 0 here, I get minus 200 plus 100, so that's going to be minus 100. I'm going to get minus 100 here. There. Here I'm going to get 0, and then here I'm going to put in 100 for x and 0 for y. So minus 100 squared plus 2,500 gives me minus 7,500. Now for each one, I'm going to calculate the determinant of a minus lambda i because that is my, whoops, that is going to be my characteristic polynomial. So I'm going to put a minus lambda, I think minus lambda minus lambda. So this is going to turn out to 100 minus lambda times one, oops, sorry, 2,500 minus lambda minus zero. And that is supposed to equal zero in order to make sure my lambda creates a singular matrix. So that means lambda is equal to 100 and lambda is equal to 2,500. So at the equilibrium point, this is a source. Over here, I do a minus lambda i. I get uh, 50 minus lambda times minus 5,000 minus lambda minus zero because this product and this product for the determinant, that's going to give me zero. This is supposed to be equal to zero, so that leaves lambda is equal to 50, and lambda is equal to, looks like minus 5,000. So this is a saddle. Sorry. Sometimes I don't look back at the screen fast enough. I hope you got that all. So there's that guy. My lambda is at a source. That guy, my lambda, gives me a saddle. And this guy, a minus lambda i. This is probably the most interesting of all of them. Minus 100 minus lambda times minus 7,500 minus lambda. But that's still zero in that case. So this is all I got, and that's supposed to equal zero. So lambda equals minus 100, lambda equals minus 7,500, and so this is a sink. And so I got a source that'll sink, and if I go back to my previous problem, and I take a look at this picture, it looks like that's a source, that's a sink, yep, sink for 100, 0, and then that's a saddle for 0, 50. So it looks like everything matches up. My Jacobian and my null lines all match up. So let's move on now to drawing the phase portrait.